Okay, so today we're going to talk about this thing called a paired sample in this particular example. And take a moment to read the problem. I'll go over it. 20 years ago, a conservation area in Upper Michigan was selected, was sectioned off into 100 squares. 15 were randomly chosen, and over a one hour period of time, the number of pollinating insects were counted. Today, the same 15 squares are chosen, and over a one hour period of time, insects were counted yet again with this table. Is there a significant decline in pollinators over the last 20 years with an alpha level of 0.03? So if it's declined, that means this is less. So if I go 20 minus today, then I want this to be more if it's declined. So that's going to be bigger than zero. I want it, If it's n equal to zero, they're the same. And if it's less than zero, well, there's more pollinators today than there was 20 years ago. And because this is the same square, right, of uh, these 100 square areas, we're going to, they're the best controller themselves. It's a paired sample. I'm going to subtract those values. So I go to my calculator, and I'm going to go to edit, and you'll see that all the values are put in there. I'm going to go to L3. I'm going to clear it off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go L1 minus L2. And there is my test, my statistics. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider what happens here. I'm going to make my null hypothesis is going to be, how about I start off with null hypothesis. My null hypothesis is going to be that there is a difference. There is no difference. That the difference, and this is what we'll call d, is equal to zero. Where the alternative hypothesis is going to say the difference is bigger than zero. Okay, so I'm going to do my statistics on this value here. And so d, capital D I called it, And so I'm going to look for d bar from my calculator. And so I'm going to go statistics, and I'm going to go one variable statistics, and I'm going to go to L3. Oh, how would I do it correctly? L3. And I get 12.1. N is 15. And my standard deviation, because I don't know my standard deviation, I'm going to take S, which is... Uh, the unbiased estimator of the population of pollinating insects. My alpha level is going to be 0 0.03, and my degrees of freedom is going to be 14. And I'm going to be using my t test statistic, because I'm going to do a t test. And my t test statistic is going to be d bar minus d, oh, capital letter D I used, D bar minus D over S divided by the square root of N, which is going to be 12.1 minus 0 over the 17.64 divided by the square root of 15. But I can do this faster in the sense I'm going to go statistics. I'm going to do a t-test on my data, which I know mu is going to be 0, L3 is where my data is, and I want it to be positive. And then I calculate this value, and I know this computation ends up being 2.66. My p-value is equal to 0 0.009. To six six. So if I look at my gra think about my graph, I know here is zero. Here is my d star, and this area is zero point zero zero nine. It's quite small. Here is where the alpha value would be. So since alpha is zero point zero three. My p-value is small compared to alpha. So, therefore, since the p-value 
is small compared to alpha. It is inside the critical region, therefore we reject H0 and claim strong evidence that the pollinating insects, pollinating insects have declined. So we make our statement based upon the p-value in alpha. We either we rejected H0 and then in context we claim support of the alternative hypothesis. And so these are the steps to go through in answering these hypothesis tests when we have a paired. I pair them because each of these grids of these 15 squares is the best control for themselves. Maybe this one was beside a river. Maybe that's why they're still the same. And so they, it's a great way to control each other. We stated our alternate null hypothesis, showed our numbers, we named our test, we showed the test statistic, calculated p-value, a graph is always great, and we answered in context.